snow. Uh, before we dig in, I just want to commend to you uh, a book by that title by uh, Paul David Tripp, which, in which he goes through Psalm 51. It's uh, 52 meditations on the psalm to take you through a year. And I really do commend that book to you. It's a wonderful resource to help you dig deeper into the truths of the psalm. As always, just working through a psalm like this, I encourage you to take some time and read it. And as you read, ask God, pray, and ask Him to help you to understand the meaning of the text um, and how it points to our Lord Jesus. Pray that God would grow a love in you for the people who will hear you teaching this. And pray that God would apply this text to your own life so that you will then be able to apply it well to the lives of those who you're teaching. And as always, I'm going to go through and just um, highlight things that I've seen uh, in this passage. Very importantly in the Psalms, it's worth just noting that these titles are original to the Psalms. They're not added later. Um, many of the other titles that we see in the New Testament and so on, somebody has uh, given those titles for the different stories we see. But... These are part of the original, and King David wrote the psalm. He tells us that he wrote it in a specific setting when the prophet Nathan came to David after he had committed adultery with Bathsheba. That story is the backdrop to the psalm, and you can read that story in 2 Samuel, um, where David had taken Bathsheba and committed adultery with her to try and cover up his sin he had had Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, killed. And he thought he got away with it. But God confronted David through the prophet Nathan. And this is a right response. This psalm shows us what true repentance should look like. One key thing we see about true repentance is that it is focused at God. Against you, you only have I sinned. Uh, David had sinned against Bathsheba, he had sinned against Uriah, he had uh, sinned against many others by deceiving them, but he says, it's against you, Lord, that I've sinned. First and foremost, it's against God that he has sinned. So David is focusing this prayer of repentance at God. Um, and then you see he speaks about himself as the one needing mercy. So everything that he says, it's my transgression, my iniquity, my sin. And in this prayer, David asks God to do a whole lot of things, but he starts with this massive request, have mercy. Why does he cry out to God for mercy? Because he knows that God is a God of unfailing love, of great compassion, a God who is able to blot out, wash away, cleanse. He's also a God, though, who is judge, He's always justified in his judgments. And so David is convinced that he is guilty. That's why he's calling out for mercy. He knows that um, God's verdict is right. God desires faithfulness. God is the one who teaches wisdom. And then we've got all these requests of things that David knows that he needs a miracle. If he's this God who has mercy, in order for David to be um, seen as right before God, a, a miracle is required. So David says, cleanse me, wash me. Hide your face, not from me, but from my sin. So interestingly here he says, hide your face from my sin, but don't cast me. 
from your presence. Or don't take your spirit from me. And then the last part of the psalm, we see a number of um, responses. He says, I will sing, um, I will teach, I will declare. He says, you don't delight in sacrifice, but there is a sacrifice that is worth bringing. And that is a broken and a contrite heart. There's all these responses to God's sacrifices on the altar. But the key response or the key sacrifice is a, a brokenness over his sin a contrite heart as he speaks about it here and just looking at uh, a few other just repetitions there's a few times so you see a pure he wants a pure heart and a contrite heart a contrite heart is a heart that realizes that it's sinful um, he says some very key uh, phrases here. Uh, cleanse me. Cleanse me with hyssop. So um, hyssop was used in a number of different uh, cleansing ceremonies in Numbers 19. Um, it was used to sprinkle water to cleanse uh, a house and people who had been in contact with a dead body. But hyssop was also used to paint the blood on the doors in the Exodus story. So cleanse me with hyssop, uh, wash me, create in me a new heart, restore to me the joy of my salvation. There's these repetitions, uh, I mean the, these requests, cleanse, create, restore, wash. And these cleanse, create, restore are linking back. So here, um, cleanse me, Wash me. Got uh, blot out here. And blot out. We also see a bit of uh, repetition of joy and gladness. So let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you've crushed rejoice. Then David also uses a number of different words for his sin. So he uses this word uh, transgressions. And he says he'll teach the transgressors. Um, and transgressions is the idea of um, rejecting God's right to rule his life. So he, he realizes that he has made a real mess of things uh, by rejecting God's right to rule his life. The, the word iniquity uh, is the idea of being off track. So as if there's a straight road ahead and you keep on turning off, you're veering off the, the right way that God has set before you. Uh, we see iniquity here as well. And then sin. So transgressions, iniquity, sins, um, So a few key things just to see uh, structure-wise. We've obviously got the intro just setting the scene. And then this first part is just this call to God to have mercy on him. And he's calling to God for mercy because he knows God. He's got a relationship with God. He knows that God is a God of unfailing love, of great compassion. And God is able to blot out, wash away, cleanse. That's why he calls on God for mercy. So this first one admits This one's asks. He's admitting all the way down to here. I was sinful at birth. I know my transgressions. I've sinned. And then he asks and he says, cleanse me, create in me, restore me. He admits, he asks. And then the last part we see that he asks to be restored. And then what it looks like to be restored So true repentance admits, true repentance asks, true repentance restores. And as a restored person, he then wants to tell others about this restoration that's possible. 
Um, he sings and declares. So he's got this joy and gladness. And he brings true sacrifice. Uh, his repentance of a broken spirit and a broken and a contrite heart. He responds to God in a relationship with him. Because God in his mercy has restored the joy of his salvation. And this really models for us what true repentance looks like. We need to admit that we are sinners. Uh, we are more sinful than we ever dared admit. But we need to admit it. We need to ask God to do the miracle in us. This word create is only ever used of God in the Bible. Firstly, we see it in Genesis 1 where God creates everything out of nothing. And we need a miracle as big as the miracle of creation to create in us a pure heart. And then he says, restore in me the joy of my salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. We need God to give us a willing spirit, a willingness to actually live his way rather than just living our own way. Now, it's important as you teach this to people, some might say, well, I, I've never done anything as bad as what David had done. I haven't committed adultery and murder. But actually, this psalm makes it clear that I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. So all of us are um, inherently sinful. Uh, this is what we sometimes call a, call a total depravity. Now, total depravity doesn't mean that we are as bad as we could possibly be. But it means that sin has reached every aspect of our personhood. Its damage of us is total. And because of that, uh, we can't stand before a holy God. This God who is judge. If God is justified in his judgment, his judgment against us as sinners is that we should be condemned to death. But God in his mercy has sent Jesus to take the punishment for our sins in our place and to cleanse us by the shedding of his blood, to create in us a new heart, the, mirac the miracle of new birth, to restore us into relationship with God. And as we keep coming back to God, admitting our sin, asking him to clean us, and asking for that restoration, he will keep restoring the joy of our salvation. We should be people who are characterized by a deep joy in the relationship that is ours because of Jesus. And as you dig in further to this psalm, I encourage you just really to rejoice in the truths that are ours, to take this model that King David gives us of how to uh, truly repent and true repentance is an absolute key part of our relationship with God. Um, so let's be a people and teach those around us to be a people who admit our sin, who ask God to do the miracle of giving us a new heart and rejoicing in the restoration that is ours because of Jesus. <laughs>